let's cover a few a uh, few tabs at the same time in the same video because they are so small um, this is the next tab pop three options uh, if you recall, this server actually includes uh, a POP3 server. So it has an SMTP server and a POP3 server. It will be able to accept messages for your users uh, from outside and uh, your users will be able to download those messages using POP3 uh, protocol. So <laughs> it has definitely some um, settings for the POP3. And these are the settings. Mostly those uh, users can uh, access their messages and you set up your users here in the users and domains, but there are a few settings for POP3 uh, that you can change here. <clears throat> so those settings are uh, the ports that should be used for POP3. And it has the same exact uh, format as the ports here. You can specify ports uh, using the semicolon. So you can separate uh, the ports using semicolon, for example, 110 and 900 and well, whatever, whatever you want to add. The only thing you need to worry about is <clears throat> never mix the ports, never specify the same port in two uh, columns here, and never specify the same port in any of these two as well. So you cannot have one server, one service, uh, bind on two ports, uh, uh, two different services bind on one port. So that's about it, about ports. The defaults are pretty good. This is the default port for uh, POP3, and this is the default port for a secure POP3 uh, using TLS, using SSL. <clears throat> now, the next one is your message queue and your user's queue and your size. Now, uh, any messages that your server relays or accepts first go through a, a file. A file is created in the file system and your, your messages are going to be stored in the file. So I'll show you. It has directories here, Q and the users, Q, users, right? And um, each message will have a file in here. And this, since it's a temporary storage, there are no files here now because uh, all the messages were delivered. That's temporary. So this one is permanent until your user re removes the message. So each domain has its own directory and inside the directory, each user has its own subdirectory and inside of it, uh, each message has its own file. The files here will be messages for your user. Again, once the user connects using POP3 and downloads those messages and deletes them from the server, they are also deleted from here. The file is deleted. I should also point out that all the messages, while they're in the queue and while they're in the user space, um, they are all encrypted. They are never plain text. So you shouldn't worry about somebody reading these messages. They're encrypted here and they're also encrypted in the queue. So you shouldn't worry about uh, somebody reading your messages. And you specify the location of the queue and location of the user directory here. You can change it by using the browse function. Um, only thing you should uh, you should remember, it's written here in red, you shouldn't use any system directories, like dedicated Windows directories, program files or stuff like that. And uh, you shouldn't use, uh, I would also add, network directories. You can, it's allowed, but I wouldn't recommend it because they're usually much slower and your servers, your, your service will be much slower because of that. Now, also another thing uh, I should mention is when you change this directory, if you go browse and you change it to something else, let's say you switch this directory or you, or you switch this directory, the files that are already in these directories and all the sub subdirectories are not going to be copied to a new location, right? Because uh, uh, of some internal conflicts. What I recommend is if you change this directory, you should stop the server first, stop the server, change the directory here or here, whatever, whichever directory you want, change the directory, copy all the files, move them from one place to another while the server is not running. And only then you should start the server. 
Only then you can start the server and it's going to be uh, pointing to a new directory, to a new location. So if you change it, old messages will be not uh, will not be copied. And if you copy them manually and restart the server, all your old messages will be picked up just fine. They are not location centric. They are not uh, specific. And uh, if they are in new location, as as long as they are there, the server will pick them up just fine. And this uh, item here is the incoming queue size in bytes. Now, remember we were talking about security, about uh, maximal uh, size of the message in bytes. This is the size of one single message in bytes. So if the single message is bigger than, uh, let's say, 20 megabytes or whatever this number is, then it's going to be rejected. right? And in here, this is the total number of the whole queue. Right? So if your whole queue is Mm, it becomes bigger than this number, right? We can add a few zeros here. If it becomes bigger than this number, then the messages will be rejected. And your messages will be rejected until um, your queue becomes more free. We will talk about um, throttling in a, a little while, and I'll show you how to avoid this. Uh, the only other parameter here is enable testing mode. Uh, this is used for testing any SMTP compliant uh, clients or like websites if you want to connect them to the server. But uh, many times when people come to me and they ask for support, what I find is this is checked. And they ask me why the email is not coming through. Well, that's why, because you actually disabled it. And... Um, <clears throat> This is for testing. This is done for uh, before you deploy it into production, you want to test it to see how it accepts messages, if it's delivered and, and stuff like that. It's for testing. Your messages will be accepted by the server, but will not be propagated, will not be relayed to the, your target server at all. Right? They'll just be um, sitting in the queue and then deleted. That's it. And it's going to be logged in the, in the log file. So what you will see in the log file is the server will accept the message and that's it, nothing else happens. So do not enable it or if you enable this, uh, this setting, do not forget to disable it because otherwise your server will not forward the messages at all. Nothing will happen. 